My name is Mike Kelly and I'm an architectural and interiors photographer and today we're going to go behind the scenes on one of my shoots. I guess I'm really known for uh, the, the light painting composites and the whole kind of before and after thing. Uh, generally what will happen is they'll take a, a base exposure uh, at all kinds of lighting and uh, effects, sky replacements, Photoshop, curves, levels, everything. And uh, you know I'll create this almost a painting, a multi-layered painting of light and adjustment layers in Photoshop to get a really beautiful um, and striking effect. So today we're here in Phoenix, Arizona. We've got this really cool modern house that we're shooting for a custom home builder. Uh, as far as the gear goes for the shoot, I always start out with the, the sturdiest tripod you can get. I've got anywhere from 10 to 100, more than 100 images of the same space and I want them to be aligned perfectly when I take them into Photoshop after. The lenses I use are Canon tilt shift lenses and I think I also use pretty frequently a Canon 17 to 40 millimeter L. While it would be unrealistic to show you everything that goes on during a shoot of mine, I'm going to focus on one of the most important shots you'll need to take for any client in this genre and that would be the twilight exterior shot. After you've got the camera set, the angle set, your pocket wizard's ready to go, you kind of got to think how you want to light it. Again, it takes a bit of pre-visualization to figure this all out. At this point, I might be anywhere from 15 to 100 feet away from the camera, and I don't want to run back and forth looking at every shot to ensure that I got the light that I need. This is where the cam range or an iPad really come into play. I can take a picture, look at the picture, adjust the picture. For example, I can change the camera settings, change the aperture, the shutter speed, ISO, take another picture and see how that looks all without leaving the room or going back, walking back to the camera to double check. So as it gets darker, you might know that ambient light levels fall and artificial light levels come up. And what I mean by that is the lighting on the house is going to get brighter as the sun falls further below the horizon. In order to blend our flash with the ambient light and the artificial light, we have about a five minute window where everything is gonna be in the same ballpark exposure wise. You want your artificial exterior lights, that is the lights that are on the house, to not be so blown out, but you also want them to look bright. If you shoot too late, your house lights are gonna be far too bright and your ambient light is gonna be far too dark. If you shoot too early, your house lights will be too dark and there'll be too much sunlight getting in the way of your flashes. So in order to find that five minute window, you wanna wait just enough until it looks like the Exposure of the house lights and the ambient light is in the same window. Everything should meter at about the same shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. So my setup for this shot in particular was a flash on a stick. Sometimes I gel it depending on the conditions if I want to match color temperature or not. For this shot, I think I used a quarter CTO. I have a flash. Uh, it's a 430EX2 on a monopod with a Pocket Wizard Flex TT5 uh, triggered to a mini TT1 on the camera. Furthermore, I'm using a Pocket Wizard Plus 3 in my hand and a Pocket Wizard Plus 3 in the camera to remote trigger. So what will happen is, I'll use the Plus 3 to trigger the shutter, pop goes off at the same time the flash goes off, and the camera records the ambient light, the artificial house light, and the flashlight all at the same time. My goal isn't so much to photograph it the way the camera sees it, but what I want to do with my photographs is create an emotion, and I want to photograph it the way you feel it. So if you walk into the space and you go, oh my god, that's gorgeous. When you look at the photo, what I want to happen is you just feel the same exact way you would as if you walked into the space. So here I have our, our base image. It's this image from which everything is going to be built upon. As you can see, there are a few lights lit, but there are some dark areas. So what I'm going to do, instead of setting up multiple lights, I will take a light, a speed light generally, on a monopod or in my hand and walk around and add light and embellish the light that's already there. So now I'll take you back to the computer and I'm going to show you how I take all these images and combine them into one in Photoshop. Here we are with the image. I'm going to show you how we went from this, this is our first test shot, to our final retouched image. I'm going to take you through every step of the way. So the first thing that we need to do is establish what we want to use for our base exposure. I found that the first test image I shot is a little bit too bright. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a shot from later in the night, which is I'm going to use as our base exposure. So I'll turn that on. And this is our base exposure. There's no real painting of light going on. It's just a decent middle ground between the sky and the foreground. Everything's about the same brightness. Of course, there are some problem spots, but we can fix those later. The first thing I'm gonna do is start lighting the foreground with my little flash on a stick. And the way I do that is by going around, walking around, as I mentioned earlier, uh, taking the light on a stick, adding little pops and highlights here and there. And if I turn these all off and turn them on one by one, 
you can kind of start to see the image come together. There's a light in the fireplace, a light on the TV, a light way on the left-hand side fireplace there, and then I get the table and chairs, and on and on. And then I'll add a little bit of contrast to that light, get a nice smooth look to it. The next thing I'll do is I will go in and I will fix the sky. Every twilight image of mine gets a sky replacement. And I'm gonna do that. I make a big pen tool selection around all of these objects, add some curves, contrast, hue and saturation. I think the sky image here I'll show you was actually shot about 15 minutes after the base image. So there's that, you can see that come together. And then after that, I'm gonna go into the pen tool, mask around the pool. Every edge gets masked, pen tooled, you name it, selected. Uh, I also do hue and saturation, contrast, curves, dodge and burn. You can see that all in here. Here's what the pool exposure looked like. I ended up masking that in, reduce the opacity a bit. And then from there, I'll add some fires to the fireplace. It's all done in Photoshop. Um, I find that the gas fireplaces don't really give a good flame to use, so it's just better to just get it in Photoshop. I'll add some orange dodge and burn, some glow here and there. After we get the fires all set, I want to turn the interior lights on. And the way I do that is again, mask out all around each window. Each and every window gets a mask. Turn those on and off. Those are from an exposure that is about completely dark. So I'll turn off the mask so you can see that. Let's see. And there's our on and off with the lights there, our interior lights. And then after that, I will go through and I will do just some global adjustments. I'll add a little bit of a vignette I'll mess with the luminosity a bit with some curves. Here we go, I'll take that up for you. Just brighten things up, mask that in appropriately. And there's our vignette, luminosity adjustments, everything's all together. The last thing I do is go through and clone out any extraneous things that I don't like. For example, this house in the background here. I actually sent that off to uh, our writer Pratik who did the retouching for me. And the last thing we do right there is again, take out our rulers, adjust the vertical lines, do any last bits of cloning, and save the image. And that is the final picture. So here we go. I'm going to turn on some lights. Fireplace, TV, all over the place. Light, 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 light. Contrast. Then we're going to do the pool light. We're going to do the color adjustments in the pool. We're going to do some flames in the fireplace. We're going to do some lights on the inside, our clone job. Some curves, contrast, luminosity. Let's go ahead and turn the sky on in the background. There you go. I'll do my dodge and burn. There you can see how everything comes together to create the final image. There's about 20 to 30 layers at play here, and there's, I just built them all up for you so you can see how everything works. So again, to get back to the reason why I do this, I think it's, it would be possible to get this in camera. However, there would be a lot of problems. I would probably need 10 to 15 speed lights. I would be in the camera. There would be lights in the camera. I wouldn't have the same control over every element of the picture. Uh, I like to be able to turn things on and off to adjust different colors. Everything gets pen tooled. I can do hue and saturation layers and adjustments to different parts of the image. I think just having control over the image like this is such an incredible benefit that it's worth all the extra time you spend in post. And sure, I mean, you might take two hours in the field and three to six to eight hours in post, but when you have control over every little detail, the pictures just look so much better. So guys, that was my process. And I know that it's pretty complicated and there's a lot that we couldn't cover in this short little video. But I hope you learned something and I hope you'll be able to try this out on your own. I'm happy to say that I've teamed up with F-Stoppers to create a full feature length DVD about every little bit of my process. Everything from the location work, the post-processing work, the business side of architectural photography and everything in between. We hope to have that DVD ready by the end of 2013 so stay tuned for that and thanks for watching. Architecture.